Hello everyone, it's Robin the Delta Crafter and I want to thank you for joining me for another video on my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be making a mailbox birthday card. We're going to be using the Parcel and Post Mailbox Die Set from Spellbinders. This is a set that um, came out last year and it is so, so versatile. It can be used for several different kinds of holidays and celebrations and we're going to use it today for, to make a birthday card. This is a continuation of the birthday series that's been going on on my channel for a couple of weeks now. And so we're going to go ahead and get started with this card. So off camera, I went ahead and die cut the mailbox. You can see there that there are a couple of pieces to the mailbox. There's one really large solid piece that really makes the whole mailbox. And then there are a couple of side pieces and a lid that um, help give some dimension to the, to the mailbox. You could die cut these in different colors. Um, you can die cut them in different shades of the same color. Whatever your heart's desire, you go ahead and make your mailbox however you choose. I'm keeping my mailbox in the solid color and I'm using this aqua kind of teal green color. And you'll see that the color palette that we're using today is um, all in this, this color palette with the teals and uh, with some white and some um, foiling accents. So I'm just putting the lid onto uh, the, the mailbox and gluing that down with my Barely Arts glue. So off camera, I also hot foiled one of the sentiments. This is from the hot foil plate set for the all occasion mailbox sentiments. And you can see there it comes with four different plates that can um, be used for different occasions. There's a Christmas one on there, um, but because we're in this birthday series, we're going to be using the birthday sentiment. Now I want this sentiment to be popped up a little bit, so I'm gonna place some of my favorite foam dots on the back of my um, foiled sentiment. I'm gonna pop that right onto the front of the mailbox. I used the, um, some white cardstock. This is Nina Classic Crest Solar White in the 80 pound weight. And I also used the teal um, hot foil, glimmer foil. So it coordinates and complements with the, uh, the mailbox nicely. So next we're going to move on to cutting all of the flowers for the for the that are going to go inside the mailbox. So I'm going to cut the uh, greenery, the leaves and the um, stems of the flowers from two different shades of green. I'm going to go with like a Kelly green and then I'm also going to use a chartreuse green. This is going to uh, provide some depth and dimension to our um, creation, our in what we are in product. Um, just by changing up and switching up the colors. If you look out in nature, yes, there's green, but there's varying shades of green. So I was trying to mimic that by using a couple of different shades of green cardstock. So I've placed all the dies down and now I'm placing pieces of Easy C tape onto those dies to hold them in place. I'm going to be using the um, Hero Arts Compact Cutter because these dies are small and they're perfect to run through this small compact cutter. Being able to cut all of my pieces right here in my workspace makes quick work for creating these flowers. So I'm just going to take that out, take my sandwich out and pull my dies up and I'm going to pop out all my little die cut pieces. So now I'm going to repeat this process using this chartreuse green cardstock. So now that all the leaves and stems are cut out, let's move on to the flowers. For simplicity's sake, because I kind of want to keep my, my color scheme um, very narrow, I'm going to just use all white flowers. So I'm going to put all of the flower dies onto this uh, Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock. And again, I'm going to hold those dies in place with some easy C tape and die cut several of the different shapes of flowers and sizes of flowers. So now it's time to assemble everything. So I'm coming in with my Barely Arts glue and I'm using that fine nozzle um, tip on it. It is my absolute favorite um, thus far. And then I'm going to use my um, my embellishment wand here to pick up all the small little uh, balls that go on the end of this stem. 
I'm adding just a little bit more of that adhesive and I'm going to place those dots onto that stem with the uh, with the embellishment wand. So for these larger flowers, or the, not well, the smaller ones as well, I'm going to use alternating colors. So I'm going to come in with a chartreuse green um, little flower cap there, and then I'm going to place a Kelly green stem on the flower. So I have both shades of green um, showing up in this flower. For the centers of the flowers, I'm going to add some little green centers on the flowers. And I'm going to make a mistake here. I'm going to make them all like this dark Kelly green. Um, but I'm going to fix that in just a few moments here. These flowers are so small and dainty, but they add a wonderful effect to the finished product. So this is when I noticed that I need a couple of flowers of this, this shape flower with some of the chartreuse green um, center. So I'm using the pokey end of my embellishment wand and I'm just pulling that dark green, that Kelly green center off because what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to layer some of these flowers together. So the there'll be the larger bottom and then some of those smaller pieces will fit right on top of those and give us a layered flower. So I'm going to add the stems to these flowers and I'm, again I'm going to alternate colors so for the flower that I have the chartreuse little bottom cup I'm going to use the Kelly green um, stem for that flower. So I'm attaching that right there. Having an embellish, embellishment wand to work with these small pieces really really helps make everything um, go a lot easier and quicker. Now I'm just creating the rest of the spray with this closed bud. And then I'm going to place all of my pieces under an acrylic block to provide some weight and just kind of make sure everything is nice and secured before we move on to the next step. So now that our flowers have had some time to dry, we can start assembling our mailbox filled with birthday flowers. But before we do that, I did want to come in and add a little bit of shading to the edge of the mailbox. I started out with this small shader brush. These are size zero uh, brushes from Waffle Flower. And I'm going in on the edge and it's while it's providing a little bit of shading, it's not really giving the depth that I really, really was looking for. So I decided to switch to my smallest um, shading brushes, uh, blending brushes from Simon Says Stamp. This brush head is a little bit bigger and it's giving the um, shading, it's applying the shading just how I was imagining um, that, that I wanted it to be. So I'm gonna go around the edges, um, uh, just the, some of the edges, not all of them, and I'm gonna apply some of that um, Salvage Patina Distress Ink and that's going to ink up the, um, the mailbox and provide the shading that I was looking for. So once I finished that, I went ahead and applied some uh, foam tape to the back of my mailbox so that it could pop up off of this solid aqua or teal colored background. Because I wanted to provide a little bit of depth and dimension by uh, just popping that up just a tiny bit. So you can see there I was working my mailbox lid because I want to make sure that that is not attached so that I can start to place my flowers inside my mailbox. So I'm going to take my greenery first and kind of place that where I want it to be. I want to uh, make sure that the greenery is in there and then I'm going to build the flowers up on top of the greenery. So I've gone in with some different shades, uh, those different shades of green that we die cut earlier. And I'm trying to kind of layer some pieces, uh, make sure some are sticking out to the side and I want to provide height. So I'm making sure that uh, some are sticking up quite far as well outside, out of the mailbox. Now I'm going to come in with the white flower sprays and I'm going to provide, uh, place those all around the mailbox and make sure that everything is kind of like oozing and bursting out of the mailbox. Come in with our little spray there. And once I have everything placed where I want it to be, I'm going to bring a piece of press and seal in and I'm going to grab all of the flowers. 
but I know that I'll never be able to get this arrangement back in here like um, like I have it now. So I decided to use the press and seal, and I'm going to pick it up from the bottom, make sure that it's um, released from the lid of the mailbox. I'm going to pull my flower arrangement out from the mailbox. This is going to allow me to be able to place some adhesive on the back of my floral and my greenery. And then I can tuck everything right back into the lid of that mailbox and it'll all be just as I had it uh, placed and arranged before. So I'm gonna place some beads of this uh, easy, I'm sorry, this uh, Barely Arts glue all along my greenery. And then I'm gonna tuck it all right back into the lid of the mailbox. Pull the lid back there just a little bit and pull the press and seal up just a tiny bit and I'm able to slide all the flowers right back into place. I want to make sure that every flower stays where it is so I'm just applying a little bit of the Barely Arts glue to the back of my lid and before I pull that press and seal completely away I'm going to press the lid down onto the flowers and make sure that everything is secure. I'm still able to use that press and seal as a handle and kind of wiggle things around. Press the lid down and now I can pull I'll pull the um, press and seal all the way back. It's a good thing to hold everything in place while you're pulling to make sure that everything remains where you had it. Because this is a liquid adhesive, you still do have a little bit of time to wiggle things around and rearrange them if something does come become out of place. So now that you have your lid secured down, if you want to go in with some um, liquid adhesive and and uh, glue some glue things down a, a bit more in a few more places, you definitely can do that. So I'm going to add a few more florals or flowers to this arrangement. Um, I let I kept a few to the side so that once I had everything tucked in, I could see where some spaces were that I wanted to. Um, fill in again and fill in more. I'm tucking in a little bit of greenery right there and then I'm going to add a flower to the lid of the mailbox and that's going to be uh, complete our floral arrangement. So I wanted to pop up the, the decorated panel from our card base so I did apply some foam tape to the back of that panel as well and now I'm sticking the panel to our card base made out of accent opaque 120 pound weight cardstock. Once I press everything onto this top folding card base, our card is complete. I want to thank you once again for joining me for another video on my YouTube channel. You can find me at The Delta Crafter on Instagram and Facebook, and you can find me on at my website, thedeltacrafter.com. The products I use to make this card will be listed and linked below. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Until next time, everyone, enjoy!